Hello, here is Bibi Walker. Welcome back to my channel. Today, another video connected with Yamaha PSRS 670. And as you can see now, I have my computer with me. So, as you may be guessing, we will be doing some crazy stuff. Today, it's a Cubase Elements 10.5 version. It's a very nice and recommended software. And I will check it, how it works, also with another uh, software called FL Studio, maybe. And the topic for today is the USB MIDI connection. So we will be making all of this from scratch. I will show you everything which you need to, you know, make some great, great, interesting things with the computer and with Yamaha PSR. And the basic goal today is to use it as a MIDI looper. So stay tuned and let's get started. All right, so we are in our super study mode and quick cabling. What do you need? You basically need an USB cable, which have this standard USB cord on the right side, which goes to the computer. And this is called the USB B port. Uh, which uh, looks like this. I will zoom it maybe a little bit focus. However, it's a al al almost square and you put this into Yamaha. And basically uh, this, you know, task should, could be done and should be done in almost every other uh, MIDI instrument, uh, which has actually a MIDI um, USB MIDI ports, because uh, the older MIDI ports was the two ports called DIN. It was square uh, with five pinholes. However, this is analog, I mean, no analog MIDI, but it's not very cool to connecting with computer. To using USB MIDI, you need this cable, and it's pretty much better solutions, because USB cable is input and output MIDI, in one cable and what does it give you just give me a moment and I will show you so basically let's put this in here somewhere here this port is called USB two holes okay when one part is connected and the second part goes to the computer I'm doing it everything from scratch with you uh, you know, no tricking, no cutting videos and stuff, so everything will be done from scratch. Uh, okay, computer. Computer is a standard uh, laptop with uh, Windows operating system. However, however, it could be any other computer. I mean, this Cubase software is commercial software, but uh, <laughs> this version I was able to buy for a very good price, uh, some kind of promotion, whatever. So as you can see now, I am connecting this USB to standard USB port. And uh, maybe it's seen or not. And um, now this device will be, you know, uh, discovered, will be installed as the... Oh, hello. <laughs> it's great. Uh, this device will be, you know, uh, recognized as the standard MIDI device, MIDI keyboard, actually, because the goal, of course, I need to start the machine. So I'm starting now and maybe we will see this, you know, blinking in here that the device is, is loaded. However, technical, yeah, digital keyboard. We are setting digital keyboard. The message is in, in here, actually, here on this bottom screen. Okay, and this is what you hear now is the built-in microphones of this laptop. So this monitoring works because I'm talking this and recording, of course, using the phone. Okay, so um, basic operation in this, uh, you know, uh, Cubase software. I have it for a week maybe. Um, to add a MIDI track, which is, of course, a track which not store the digital data like, you know, tape recording, you need to add, uh, sorry, uh, you need to add a MIDI track. So uh, press with mouse with the right in here, in this area, and select add MIDI track. 
I will zoom in a little bit. Maybe it will be seen. Okay, add MIDI track. Add MIDI track. Click. And name. Name. Okay. And the most important stuff happens in here on the left section. I will take the phone and to discuss this more detail. Okay. So here is the important stuff because MIDI track actually can listen MIDI you could so record MIDI and then if you play back it, it it could send it to some output and in here you are configuring two things input which could record for all MIDI inputs digital keyboard let's try it as you can see now I'm pressing something on the Yamaha and here monitoring works. It shows me the stereo input is not, not important now. However, we don't have an audio track, so it won't, you know, it won't be a problem for our configuration. So the first thing is this input, this icon represents input, so arrows go inside. You need to select this digital keyboard. You can also find some information about your device in MIDI and you know there is something something maybe in here. Doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of things like, uh, you know, pre-counting in here, you, which is metrom and the song settings is 110, 20, sorry. And the same BPM I will set in Yamaha. Uh, why it's important uh, to have nice recorded stuff. And yes, we had hard rock grand piano. So our basic goal is to record some MIDI track. And we have set this, um, you know, input to digital at the, uh, but the output should be also digital keyboard. Digital keyboard is the device, you know, discovered by the operating system. And actually MIDI out is another digital keyboard port. This Yamaha gives you two ports. I don't know why, maybe it's a feature I don't know. I'm using this first digital keyboard. And now I have something which is called input and output from the same device at the same time. Uh, you maybe don't listen it, but now all the notes are played double. Why does this happen? Because I'm pressing something in here and this is actually now works as the MIDI keyboard. It goes to the computer you know, it's recorded, but also forwarded to the output, which means this F note goes and goes back, but it doesn't, you know, uh, it doesn't, um, it's not a problem for recording because if you record, we will be recording only once. And okay, so we got the tempo uh, to record something, you're pressing on the keyboard, this key, Amper, uh, this star, I don't know, asterisk, wildcard, whatever. And also I am enabling uh, this pre-counter and metrom because I would like to record a loop. I mean, I would like to record some part of, you know, piece of music and then use it as a MIDI looper. Okay, so I will also activate count in, which will be counting two bars before I start playing, it could be difficult to play <laughs> without seeing, but maybe this, I will try to record something. Okay, so now we are trying to record something using MIDI. So I'm pressing, um, you know, I will give you more, more look about the keyboard and what I'm pressing. Okay. Maybe I will put the computer a little bit on this side. Uh, no, it's a not good idea. Maybe the other side. 
because I would like you, I would like you to see everything, what's going on and, and how it works. So I'm pressing pre-counting. Two, three, one, two, three, four. Okay, so I recorded five bars, sorry, four bars. You can see this in here. Uh, you can, you know, expand this track to see actually what I am was playing. By pressing one on the numpad, you are going to the beginning and by pressing um, bar space, you are, uh, you know, playing this. What have you recorded? This metrum is from this program, from this Cubase. You can disable it because if you enable metrum, it works for recording and you know playing uh, one and the thing. So let's go back by pressing one on the pad and play. This is a loop. Okay, so this is a loop. Uh, double click in here, double click on this track and you will see the details. Of course, ah, I'm pretty, <laughs> I'm pretty in the rhythm. We can use a quantize, we can use a lot of things to work with this. We, we could, you know, expand this track. This is actually MIDI recording, so it's called, it, it's a, you know, notes recording and, and editing and you can do whatever you want. However, this video is not about Cubase, uh, you know, working. Uh, I think, I think, I'm thinking about some transposing. Some transposing, maybe. Glue, trim, draw. Uh, because you know the laptop hides me the keyboard I cannot play when I'm in here and I would like to show you everything so however uh, let's forget about transposing what can we do now with this track uh, we could uh, you know there is something which is called the snapping of the bars so if you set it actually nicely with this button you can you know repeat repeat and now we can check if this loop works. One, two, three, four, dun, 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 dun. It's not super perfect, however, you can understand the idea, the concept. I will put the computer to the back for a moment. Uh, so the basic, um, you know, the basic concept of this whole, of this whole, uh, you know, of this whole project is to, you know, you have a MIDI recorder inside this instrument. Uh, you may know from my other videos when we explored, when we have explored the style creator, that you can, you know, record record some part of, you know, video, uh, some part of track MIDI, and then, uh, you know, use it to build your own style and improvise with this. Uh, what is the advantage of such a program like this one and connecting to computer? Now, let's copy this track more, I mean, 45 bars, which is pretty long. I will press one, go to the beginning, and I will leave this track and I add another track. This is multi track MIDI recording, so you can, you know, add another MIDI track. And name, okay, name, second, doesn't matter if you add another track. By the default, this new track is recordable, so record enabled. And you also need to, you know, look in here, make sure that this input and output is digital keyboard. Yes, and it, it is digital keyboard. Of course, if you have another MIDI device, 
I mean another keyboard or you know a software MIDI player of course this one built in computers are absolutely bad but now I will record another track with some improvisation in here using exactly the same things that I have discussed so I'm pressing one going to the beginning and I will enable metrom however no I don't need metrom pre-counting bam bam it's enough let's take a look in here my song only gets uh, 50 bars 15 bars so rest of this loop I could delete 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 whatever you want however um, now as you can see we get two tracks and if you if we play it Of course, the, 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 the device which plays this is this Yamaha. If you check what's going on in here, you will see nothing. Why? Okay, stop. Why you we see nothing? Because actually now, this device is only, you know, receiving MIDI notes, receiving comments. I, uh, what is the MIDI command, MIDI note? is play this note for this tone and you know volume etc because it's, it's, it's touch sensitive so you can ev check everything in here how it looks and the basic is that you are you know sending data 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 from those two tracks into this you know receiver so you know it's a MIDI output this is output device and here's input and if we're recording, we do exactly opposite situation. This is sent as the MIDI keyboard and this received and saved. But now if you play it, because of the output device is also digital keyboard, which is this Yamaha, we can hear this sound. And now you may be, you know, uh, wondering what's going on with these notes, where they go, which voice they are playing and how all those things works. So, the magic happens in mixer if you take a look at the mixer and uh, this is you know style song left right forget about it we don't play now we only receive notes from this computer so the magic has happened somewhere else when here uh, song channels okay and now play what happened as you can see now, the channel number one is this background loop and this is the solo. We can, you know, change the volumes, do whatever we want. We stop the melody, so I need to go back. Okay. So, actually, this, this device, I mean the software, uh, but this is also this is exactly the same like if you use a hardware MIDI software you are sending MIDI stream MIDI notes to some channel into receiver and here in this you know settings you can change the channel so the first track which is this one if I click it it's change is in is go to channel number one and this track goes to channel number two but we could click on this and change, for example, into another channel. Three. Why not? And let's play. What happened? Now, no, the channel number one is playing by the channel number three. What is also interesting? If this mixing console received the MIDI signal, it plays the voice which is in here. This is completely something different that you have 
known uh, from this time. I mean, it's nothing with the left side because it has own banks and stuff. It's nothing with the styles. It have its own, you know, uh, mapping of the channel to voice. So you can use your arrows and change, for example, this channel number three from grand piano to something absolutely different. I don't know. Let's let's play and see what happens. Let's change it in real time. Maybe something completely. So as you can see, from this one, we could send a track into, you know, desired channel number. And by going into Mixer, we can change the voices, change everything we, we want with the voice, uh, which you know from other my videos, how to edit voice and, and so on and so on. So you have complete control over your Yamaha playing and you can use the samples, pads, everything you have in here. This nice voices. Actually there's a this is very good for playing MIDI. I mean you, you take a MIDI from here, any MIDI recorded but someone else from internet and so on, and you can you know set the channels and send to other channels and so on and so on. And use it to, you know, playing. Of course in here you can edit this, make loops, fixing um, your mistakes and so on and so on. So this is actually, I'm showing you all of this to, you know, give you an idea of editing music with MIDI uh, software. Because until this time, we all the time make some, you know, editing using Style Creator, Punch In, Punch Out. Maybe I didn't record it about punch in, punch out using pedal. So, you know, to delete some part of, you know, music and record again. However, all this is always about MIDI signature, MIDI files, MIDI stream, however you call it. It's all, gen in generic, it's a MIDI data. So it's some things which could flow over Bluetooth, over a cable, USB cable, or just inside the device. And, you know, anything with the sound, with the instrument sound, like the uh, synthesizers, romplers, etc., is is you know by the MIDI because it's an international multi-producer standard, and basically the cheaper the cheaper devices doesn't have very you know sophisticated and nice interface to editing MIDI. You know uh, the producer like Yamaha, Korg, whatever they they you know uh, make another model of new year new model that adds something like you know hoard rupert and they you know they want uh, another 200 bucks for this feature uh, because they put this in here make you know more convenient bigger screen etc etc however all this stuff you can do by the computer you know record one track second track to the multi-track then get this file into computer fix some stuff you know again set this uh, mapping of the channel to voice inside and use it as a player and record this as a song. There's a lot of possibilities which you can do on the computer. However, I'm not very, uh, you know, a very, very fan of editing with computer because this work actually reminds me my uh, professional work as a, you know, system engineer. So if I'm making music, I would like to sit and make music on the device. And don't use a computer, you know, computer device, computer keyboard. You know, if you have a MIDI keyboard, actually, this is very common, you know, pattern and, and the idea. If you have a MIDI keyboard, just MIDI keyboard, nothing fancy. It's only a MIDI input from to your computer. You use, you use your, you know, favorite program like FL Studio, Cubase. This, this is new for me. Actually, however, it's pretty nice. Cubase, there is also ProLogic, very expensive. 
super pro or whatever. However, the idea of all these programs is the same. You can, you know, uh, route the MIDI signals from one to another, making transport, quantizing, etc. So most of these features are also in here. However, as you may know from my videos, not exactly everything is so simple. I mean, making loop, uh, you know, you need to record in loop, save as a style file. It's not very simple. Here, a few seconds, I record one pattern, it's nice, I repeat this and I have loop and I could, you know, play another track, another track, change the, the stuff. Okay, I think it's all for now. I would like to make this video as some kind of introduction and so you, uh, you know, I would like to show you some possibilities with the device, like this keyboard, which is MIDI input and player in one time, in, in, in one, uh, you know, device. Because if you have a MIDI keyboard, which is only an input MIDI, you can connect it into computer and use it, you know, instead of using mouse and clicking on the computer, you can, you know, play and it's nice, you know, recorded into MIDI track. However, this device is also a player of MIDI, so you can use it as an output because what will happen if we play our MIDI without the Yamaha and, you know, get only the Windows crazy? Let's hear how it sounds. So, change to Microsoft GS Wavetable Synth. And from a <laughs> second track also, change from, you know, Yamaha to Microsoft Wavetable Synth and play. Oh my goodness, this is so horrible, believe me. Maybe the volume... The volume is cut down. I will need to change. And now it's not even re uh, playing it. But believe me or not, it could it, it could send this MIDI data into Wave built-in software MIDI player and play it, and it'll be horrible. If you play a standard MIDI file in computer without any, it will be horrible. Um, so the basic concept for this is to use, you know, the computer and the uh, and, uh, keyboard like the Yamaha as a MIDI keyboard, so the input of MIDI data and the player, the receiver. So it's, uh, you know, you outsource some kind of feature which you don't have here and put this into computer. So by computer you, you have this, you know, memory things, recording, convenient recording, multi-track, watching of these tracks, and so on. There's a lot of things in com on this program which you can do. I don't want to show it now. However, you can do a lot of things. And also, you may know from my video, I have this uh, uh, digital piano. It's called Kawaii KDP 110. There is only one video first. When I am, when I am, uh, you know, presenting the Bluetooth connection with MIDI because it is also, this one doesn't have uh, Bluetooth. It's a model from a few years back, so the new one probably have this Bluetooth MIDI Yamaha keyboards. However, this Kawaii have bl both Bluetooth and this USB cable, and actually the same principle is in here. I could take this, exactly this uh, project. And maybe we will do this. Why not? Let's do something crazy. Um, okay, so now I will, you know, disconnect this cable. Disconnect this cable. Just give me a second. I will disconnect this cable. I will take this and I will go with this into my living room and I will connect this project into Kawaii. And we can you know, record on here and listen on Kawaii, how the samples just sounds. Okay, so just give me a second. 